what other features can we use to define immature B cell populations? Well, it's well recognized that antigen expression will shift in a very coordinated and predictable fashion as a cell transitions from an immature to mature B cell. Um, this process usually occurs in the bone marrow, so we can see different stages of B cell maturation in uh, the bone marrow, and we can use expression of various antigens to define our immature cells. Let's consider the transition from the immature early B cell or early stage one hematogone to our naive but mature B cell. So within this transition, one marker that's stable is CD19. You can see it there highlighted by the light blue arrow. CD19 is expressed throughout B cell maturation and therefore is a great B cell marker overall. We've talked about CD45. CD45 expression is lower on immature B cells and then intensity of this marker increases as you transition to immature cell. So immature B cell populations usually have lower CD45. Two markers which are expressed at high levels on immature B cells but then drop as cells mature are TDT and CD34. These are great markers of immaturity. CD10 is another marker that's expressed at high levels on immature B cells and decreases as a cell transitions from an early stage hematogone to a late stage hematogone or B cell precursor and eventually to a mature B cell. It's absent on mature and na or naive B cells, though it can be acquired later on uh, as a B cell, mature B cell then uh, enters a follicle center. We've talked about markers that decrease in expression with maturation. Let's talk about markers that do the opposite. Consider CD20 and cap on lambda light chain. These three markers will increase in intensity as a B cell matures with mature B cells having uh, normal mature B cells having high levels of CD20 and expression of either kappa or lambda light chain. Okay, so let's review some immunophenotypic features then that can help us distinguish an immature B cell population from a mature B cell population. Our immature B cells will express markers of, associated with immaturity. So they're often positive for TDT and maybe positive for CD34 as well. We'll often have bright CD10 and may be positive for CD38, uh, two markers that you can see on our early B cells. Um, but when it comes to more mature markers like CD20 and CD45, these are usually either very low or absent um, and surface light chains should not be expressed. When it comes to mature B cells, they'll have the opposite immunophenotype. They lack immature markers, so the mature B cells shouldn't be positive for CD34 or TDT. Uh, by contrast, they're going to express high levels of uh, more mature markers like CD20 and CD45, and they are typically surface light chain positive. So with that in mind, let's consider this example of a typical B lymphoblastic leukemia at the bottom of the slide. So this sample is taken from a patient uh, with B lymphoblastic leukemia. The abnormal blasts are highlighted in red, whereas the normal background mature B cells are highlighted in blue. Uh, if we consider the first plot of CD45 versus 19, you can see that cells of interest are blasts or CD19 positive, uh, confirming that they are B cell in origin. Uh, they have low level CD45, one marker of immaturity. And then in, in the next plot, you can see their CD34 positive. These cells in plot three, you can see are bright positive for CD10, uh, and they're essentially negative for CD20. Contrast the position of this abnormal population on the plot of CD10 versus CD20 from the normal background B cells in blue. If we look at kappa and lambda, or kappa versus lambda, our uh, abnormal B lymphoid blasts are negative for both kappa and lambda, uh, but you can see that our normal background mature B cells in blue have polytypic expression of these two light chains. Now I mentioned that CD38 can be increased in an immature B cell population. If you look at the second plot, you can see the level of CD38 is relatively low. Um, and that decreased CD38 expression really distinguishes this abnormal blast population uh, from a normal B cell precursor. That's really part of our secondary steps and we're gonna talk more about that um, and how to use those kind of tools during video two.